Hey, um, this is Akshay Sura. This is another um, episode of the unofficial Psycho training, uh, this time concentrating on the um, Sitecore Commerce 9 post installation steps for developers. So you have installed uh, your Commerce 9, um, brand new and shiny with update 2, hopefully, and now what do you do? And that's where um, it kind of gets tricky, right? So like we, depending on if you've taken the uh, Commerce 100, 200 courses, you might have gone through uh, some of the material as to what you could do, what you should do, but in real world, um, it doesn't work that way. You jump in and now you're all of a sudden trying to set up your machine and you're like, I, I don't know what to do. So that's the same position I was in and this is basically my learnings um, along with help from a couple of the guys uh, in the Sidecore Slack Commerce channel. So we'll try to look at what exactly do we need to do in order for us to get going um, once your Sidecore Commerce 9 is up and running. Okay, so one of the first things you'll need to do is install Postman. Uh, if you haven't used it before, it's a great tool for you to uh, play around with uh, web service calls, tweak the requests, see the responses, things of that sort. So go ahead and get the new version. I think it's like 6.1 or something like that is the newer version. Um, just a little bit more polished than the earlier versions. Uh, the second thing you would do as part of your um, as part of your commerce install, you would have the commerce engine SDK. Go ahead and uh, extract it to a folder which you find in suitable for your project needs. What we are after is this folder inside of the commerce SDK uh, where they have pre built, uh, you know. Uh, collections which will help us uh, along with workspaces and things like that. So we'll look at that and that would definitely help. So one of the first things you would do is come to your commerce uh, authoring www.root uh, wherever you have it installed, open up the config.json file uh, and essentially what you're looking for is you're looking for this specific setting uh, to set the anti-forgery um, enabled to false. And this will help us with our request. Uh, please remember that this is a local install. Uh, this is a dev install locally, so we're trying to set up our machines to work locally. So assuming that we don't have you know, SSL certs, which are production quality, things like that, this is basically going to make our life easier. Uh, we'll go ahead and save this, but um, a word of a note is that anytime you make changes to any of these JSON files uh, for your commerce install, which you would probably be tweaking quite a bit, um, you would need to go through a process called bootstrapping. Um, essentially what that means is there's a call and we'll go over it later on. So whatever's in your JSON config, we would need to translate that and push it into the commerce database. So the config is um, is, is in sync between the, the actual JSON as well as the, the commerce on the database side. But we'll get to that um, shortly after this. So the next thing you do is uh, come back into Postman, get over here, turn this SSL certificate verif verification to off. And just trying to avoid any kind of issues in terms of us communicating with a local instance, um, just making things simpler. Okay, the next thing is uh, let's go ahead and import the collection. So uh, as you can see, we don't have any collections at this moment. Go ahead and hit import, import folder choose folders we're basically going to just choose the postman folder so it, it goes ahead and imports all of them as you can see um, all of these status messages um, they are importing um, all the all the collections from what's been given as part of the default install um, one of the, the most important things as part of this, just to remember that you would be spending quite a bit of time in Postman um, to debug, to test, to validate, to do a bunch of other things. So just try to get comfortable, play around with it. Um, if, uh, you know, if you need help again, uh, reach out in the Slack channel. All right, uh, the next thing uh, I wanna highlight is that make sure 
So as part of the input of the collection, it creates these environments. And essentially what these environments are is they have um, a set of values um, for properties or placeholders like you could see. And essentially it's pointing to a specific site for your commerce install. So you're trying to interact with that specific site. So uh, if you need an additional one, go ahead and add one, set the appropriate values. Um, and then uh, that way you're always working with the instance you want to make sure that you know i always make sure i'm on in a specific environment because if you aren't then it's not going to recognize all of this um, one of the other things which is uh, important uh, is to be able to add so go ahead and go to globals let's add a variable called uh, Sidecore ID token. Why this is is that that is what is used in order for us to um, get an authorization token, and that variable uh, we want it to be accessible to all the calls. So if I go ahead and hit send at this moment in time, uh, what I'll get is I'll get the access token. And if I go back in here, look at globals, as you can see, it sets the global variable uh, with the auth token. So this way. Uh, when I go into any other um, call and uh, do a, you know, say so get cart right now, I don't have much in there, but it comes back with a valid response. If you don't have an auth token, none of your stuff will work. Uh, it'll just, you're, you're not authorized to make those calls. And um, almost close to finishing out this video. So essentially one of the last things I wanted to quickly show you is that anytime you make any configuration changes, add plugins, things of that sort, uh, you have to go through this bootstra bootstrap Sitecore Commerce call, which essentially syncs all the JSON with the actual um, database config for commerce. And that way everything is in sync as well as you initialize environment. And typically what I have learned is that once you do that, just to kind of make sure that your settings are valid and still holding is to reset uh, your app pulls in order for us to bring it back and see if the values are still there. Usually um, if you don't do things properly, it'll stay in memory, it'll, everything will work fine. Once you restart your machine or something like that, you bring it back and you know nothing's working. So just to kind of make sure that that happens. So I, I hope uh, this is helpful. Um, I know that there is a ton of resource out there. Um, you know, Google's a great resource for you to find things, but this uh, we're hoping to create a, uh, you know, one place where there's a ton of information for you to get. And that's what unofficial site code training tries to do. Um, if you it's kind of hard if you don't follow the right people on twitter for instance you don't see the blog post coming in you have to rely on google and things are not um, given to you in the right way so hopefully this will help you out um, one of the thing i would like to mention is you know if you are not already part of this the stack exchange is an amazing resource there's a lot of people there answering your questions um, on any topic related to Sitecore. So I would suggest and you know, get out there, ask questions, answer questions, make comments on existing questions. Uh, it's a huge resource and a lot of the, the Google search entries point to the Stack Exchange question. So it's very useful. Uh, another one of the tools, which is the most amazing tool on the planet for a Sitecore resource is the Sitecore um, Slack. Uh, amazing resource and amazing community. So you can really see how this community works. If you are on Sitecore Slack, there's people from all parts of the world. Uh, there's about over 3,000 something users um, interacting on different channels. And that brings us to the final part, the credits, where credits are due. I always say that we have the best community on the planet. Sitecore wouldn't be Sitecore without the Sitecore community. People are willing to help, regardless of whether they're busy or not and things like that. I have found that being new to uh, commerce, um, all the challenges I was facing, people in the Sitecore um, 
Slack uh, in the e-commerce channel helped me out a ton. And I wouldn't have been able to make a lot of progress in a short period of time if, if that wasn't the case. Um, and just two people to call out. There's obviously a ton of others who helped me out in the e-commerce channel, but these two went above and beyond. So Peter, who uh, helped me out uh, with the challenges I was facing and things like that. And he uh, has a bunch of amazing blog posts on Tetco Commerce 9, so please go visit his blog and take a look. Um, he had, uh, this video is actually based on one of the blog posts he's recently written about setting up your development environment. Um, and so I would need to give him the credit for it. And again, any questions I've had, uh, he was, you know, more than active in terms of trying to give me guidance. Uh, Kautilu Prasad, again, uh, an amazing guy. He was able to get on go to meeting with me, give me directions. You know, these guys have done commerce projects and they have uh, information on information and experience on how to customize things, how to do things the right way, or how maybe you should approach things. Even if they don't know, they're able to give you directions. And again, like I said, there's ton of others in the e-commerce channel who are willing to help you. Um, just get out there and ask your questions. I hope this helps. Uh, the next um, uh, video in this unofficial psycho training series would probably be continuing on the commerce path, um, trying to uh, work on how to do debugging uh, in your environment, how to add a plugin, things like that, and I'll, I'll walk you through it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much.